Welcome back to Coin Mojo. Today I'm going to talk about my quarters in October. And at the very end of this video, I'm going to do a die clash demonstration. Stick around and you shall see. This is going to be a good one. I promise you. All right, we're going to do the quarters today. I sorted them out. Um, at the previous video, I showed you a stack of quarters. Uh, I've kind of went through and I weeded out the junk here. And when you're doing the volume that I'm doing, sometimes junk gets thrown in there. And then I got to do a double take to make sure that it's not a die chip or some kind of anomaly. Anyway, uh, we're going to go into detail on each of these rows here. But to start with, um, these are all the Nina and Oterio Warren, the, the latest uh, women in history. I got two. Uh, I have the heads and tails rolls. So I keep, I keep oh, that one's a tail tail. I thought I had heads tails. There's a heads tails. So I'm going to keep rolls of those. Um, I'm pulling all these just in case there's a new discovery, which uh, so far I haven't seen anything online about. Uh, these having any significant errors. Now on the Wilma Mankiller, the, uh, there's die clashes, there is die chips uh, in the hairline. Uh, I haven't seen any of the, the flips, the hair flip I've seen. Uh, on the Sally Ride, this one happens to have a nose wart. Uh, these, I don't have any of the double, there's three different types of earring doubling going on. I, I haven't found any of those yet here in Michigan, uh, but I have gotten the drooling George or the, uh, the nose warts. And then these are just anomalies. I, I keep all the Olympic type of Canadian coinage here in Michigan. Uh, an unusual worn out quarter, just weird, a, a gold tone quarter, a copper tone quarter. I don't know if that's paint or if it's missing the clad layer. So far, uh, it just looks to be painted. Um, I have to do some kind of a test on it to try to determine if it's pure copper. All the silvers that I found this month in, in the quarter bags. Um, these are just some of the better condition 2009, 2010. Uh, lower mintage quarters or uh, quarters that I might uh, replace in my book. Um, San Francisco proof minted coins. Um, these are all errors. The spinning horses, the In God We Rust, the missing leaf on the Arizona cactus quarters. These are some of the American Memorial Parks uh, P&D versions uh, that I keep to try to maybe pair up with the W's to sell. All of the Washington crossing the Delaware. There are variations in errors here. Let's do this. And then, um, yes, I did get some crowns this month. These are all better condition, uh, early 80s, late 60s. And these are all my West Points. So we're going to go through, let's see what do we got here in West Points. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13 West Points this month. And you can see, um, yeah, I mean, some of them, they're not in really great shape. But surprisingly, some of them are. So we're going to go and look and see what we got here. Welcome back, Coin Mojo. It's quarter time. So for the month of October, I did manage to pull 13 West Points, all of which were 2020, with the exception of the Lowell on the lower right. That's 2019. All the 2020s carry the privy. The top five are Salt River Bay. The next two are Marsh Billings Rockefeller. Three of those. And then one, Tall Grass Prairie. Two of the National Park Bat Quarter. One which is the Weir Farm, I believe. And that one's really dirty. And the low on the end, 2019. I think the best of the bunch may be the um, Tall Grass Prairie in regards to condition. It's pretty pretty clean, not, not a lot of scratches or mars. Uh, pretty, I'd say it's a decent one. Um, but yeah, at this point in the game, West Points are becoming very scarce. And... Um, the only reason why I got 13 of them is because of the volume of which I, I've been searching. And um, I kid you not when I tell you that I've done two and $3,000 a week. That can add up to a lot of uh, a lot of searching. And it might only represent one out of $1,000. So there you have it. It's a grind. For the silver quarters, I have a 54, a 57, 60, 62, 63, one, two, three, four, five, 1964s. We have a total of 10 silver quarters. Uh, melt value, give me a sec. As of the time of filming this, Monday afternoon, silver is 1915 an ounce, down 12 cents. 
making each of these quarters worth $3.46 a piece. So we'll turn $2.50 into $34. For the clad proof coins, San Francisco minted, I have a 2001 North Carolina, a 2003 Arkansas, a 2016 Fort Moultrie, and a 2016 Harbors Ferry. Not in really great shape, but I save all the San Francisco minted proof coins. Okay, some common die cracks, grease fill, and die chip errors are the Delaware quarter, the Kansas quarter, and the Arizona. This has the spitting horse. Each one of these display varying degrees of, uh, the, which is a die crack, from the snout to the to the rim. Uh, this one looks like a um, a grease die or a strike through. These are four or five of the Kansas uh, In God We Rust, where the, the grease fills the tea on the die and the tea gets obliterated or is very faint on the Arizona Cactus Quarter, um, 2004. I'm sorry, 2003. Um, at the bottom of the cacti, there is a what looks to be an extra leaf. These two came out of a mint fresh roll that I picked up at a bank. Somebody dumped a few rolls from the collection that were, you know, brand new. And I searched that roll and pulled two two of those die chips out of there. I'm gonna do a little close up on some of these. I'll get some stills. I'll follow stills after this. Starting with the Delaware Caesar Rodney die crack. Two long ones here. That one's really nice. Here's a much shorter one. Um, still considered a spinning horse. Uh, different conditions on these coins. This next one is a full a die grease. Obliteration of most of the text on both the front and the back. Not in real great shape, but uh, it is what it is. This is the Kansas State Quarter. Um, bison with the In God We Rust. You can see the T is obliterated on these three or four here. Uh, this last one in pretty nice shape, but the T is a little more visible here. The Arizona Cacti Quarter. Um, the artist initials partially obliterated by a die chip. Those are pretty common. I like to use the blue book for my uh, guide for evaluation, and I just wanted to show you because I mentioned it several times. And uh, so for the quarters, ooh, sorry, um, 1980s. Okay, looking at the, you know, MS6365 and Proof are the three uh, ranges that they do price out. And you can see the 82 is a uh, dollar for a MS63. Uh, half a billion were, were stamped, but... Uh, they're still showing a dollar. However, the 83P with 673 million, they're showing an $8 value for an MS63 and 25. That might be part of the, the rage of why everybody's looking for the 83s. I don't know the full story. I believe it has something to do with the circulation, right? Uh, 83 was the video age. Everybody was dropping quarters in the, the machines and they, they got worn out. And I guess there is also no proof or minted uh, mint sets for 83 possibly. So here's the Denver Minute showing a value of $3 and MS65 of 20. Uh, 10 times more than um, than its closest counterparts, the 84. And then it jumps up again in 86 of 1 and $2 for an MS63. Um, yeah, it's worth looking to see if you have any of those uh, those higher valuations on 86, uh, primarily the 83. And I don't know, let's just look back here at... Uh, 65, 66, 67, still only uh, 30 cents, 50 cents for a 68. Uh, I don't know if it's worth even hanging on to them, but I pull those and I will definitely, uh, you know, compare them. I, everyone of us has a book to fill, right? So uh, we will fill the book with the best copies that we can get our hands on. So uh, that's why I do it. I'm not going to hang on to them forever. I will eventually um, fill out the books and uh, get rid of the rest. Let's find out together. Okay, well, since we're on the subject, I decided to use my trusty blue book and look up proofs and mint sets. And sure enough, there is no mint sets in 82, 83. So that would explain why getting a copy of a mint condition 82 or 83 will bring up its value. Uh, also, if you'll notice, the 86 has a population or mintage of 1.1 million, which is a low, a low number. So that might uh, raise the value of even the 86s. So there you have it. Mystery solved. Just had to come back and look at these uh, Canadian quarters. I like to save the uh, 
you know, the Olympic series and, you know, they're always in pretty nice shape. Uh, this one is just so unusual. I had to, I had to just show it in the video. This is going to be one of those aftermarket re, uh, refinishes. And this is, I'm pretty sure after closer inspection that this is not a uh, copper uh, or missing clad. If you look, the edges are kind of uh, silvery, not silvery, but uh, chrome. And um, you can see the, in, in the edge, right? You got the two tones, but yet the, uh, the high spots are starting to wear off. So yeah, that's a paint job. That's what that is. Not a copper, not a missing clad. All right. All right, we're getting close to wrap up here. Uh, we're at 2021, Philadelphia. And then we're going to show you what we got in 2022 right after this. But here I have uh, varying degrees of uh, anomalies with the Washington crossing to Delaware. There were uh, die clashes. There were die chips. There were finger scrapes or feeder scrapes, feeder finger scrapes, I'm sorry. And um, and then, of course, the big one is the uh, the giant crown on top of the on top of George Washington's Tricon. Now these here, these four uh, in the middle here, you can see we're right at the very tip of his Tricon. It looks like a crack is starting to form. Could that be the beginning of the the, the large crown down here on top of the Tricon? And then up here on top, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off the tripod first. Okay, so here you got uh, what I refer to as the bird's nest back here in the, uh, sorry, right in the crux of that Tricon. Uh, here's another similar, what I call the bird's nest or chip. Here's another unusual die chip up at the tip, almost. Then you have one right on the top, almost touching the letter E in E plural basunum. That one's different. I Actually, that's the first one that I found of that. And uh, here, I believe, is the... It's hard to see here. I will get a still. But right here on the front of Washington's face is actually a, uh, a clash from the obverse die of George Washington's neck, I believe. And then here is, uh, this one is the one that displays the feeder, feeder, ugh, feeder finger scrapes. And I'll get some stills to show you that a little clearer, see if I can clear that up. Now you'll notice the tip, the front of the Tricon here. You can see it's starting to bubble up. And I believe that could be the beginning of the, the large crown. These are found primarily in Michigan. I've seen them listed out of New Hampshire as well. And I think uh, Georgia might have gotten a couple of these. Um, Alabama has another crown, uh, but it's only, I would say, about three quarters because it doesn't quite go to the tip and it doesn't quite go through the PL and pluribus. So it is a, a crown, but it is not the large crown. Um, I do know from my research that there's, you know, several machines that stamp out quarters and each of them's got a unique set of dies. And, you know, there's been lots of die failures, as you can see, in this area of George Washington's Tricon. And uh, I got to believe that these are all varieties from different die sets. So this one clearly is unique and it comes from one set of dies. Now, is this the beginning of that die chip? Could be, seeing how they landed in the same area here in southeastern Michigan as the crowns themselves. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Comment below if you got an idea about it. So here's a small die chip in the rear of the Tricon. Here's yet another one. And then a third one here, a little bit larger. And here is a significant crack starting right at the top of the Tricon and into the letters. This is the die clash with the Washington's neck on uh, from the obverse. Here is your feeder finger scrapes, pretty significant. Uh, here is the beginnings of what looks to be maybe the crown. And you can see the flat area where the metal is rippling up because you're, you're getting some fatigue in the die and it's starting to show through in the stamping. And here's where it looks like it's starting to break away. The full crown does kind of go all the way to the tip from tip to tip and through the lettering. These three that I'm showing you here are very much the same uh, full crown error and uh, there you have it that's my so I pulled four Maya Angelos and one Sally Ride which are the first two in the five 2022 women in history quarter series this year and each of these has basically a die chip around the mouth They're calling it the herpes or the drooling George didn't have the double earring 
and then on this Sally ride, I think I got the the wart on the nose and twofer, right? The wart on the nose with the the drooling George. Folks, we're almost to the end here. I have third, third coin in coin the series in the for series 2022, for 2022. Uh, the Wilma Man Killer. Uh, the Wilma now, Man uh, Killer. all these coins up the top now, uh, all have the die the chip in the hairline, have the and all of these down at the bottom are various states of the the are various states of the clash. The die clash is when the obverse die and the reverse die bang against each other when there is no coin in the chamber. This will actually leave a partial impression in the other die and it may run off several coins or hundreds of coins before it either smooths back out or they repair or replace it. So I'm going to give you some snapshots of each of these coins and their perspective uh, die chip. This one over here on the end is unusual in that it has a die chip in the star. Let's see if I can just pick it up and bring okay, it up so to the camera. Okay, so here's the small die chip on the star to the right. Yep, it's right there. This on is the, a uh, normal hairline with the uh, deep and one of hairline the stars, there. This uh, is one, one with a die star. chip in the hairline. This I've, is another die chip in the hairline. I've got several of these. Here is the the die clash. This is the hairline being clashed into the obverse die, and now it's a raised surface on just below the earlobe. This is the uh, die clash on the reverse side between the letters I and L and on the shoulder. Of okay, Willem I wanted Maker. to learn a little bit myself about die clashes, and I put together this uh, demonstration here to show you how a die clash can um, cause raised lines in the surfaces of a coin. In this particular uh, particular situation, the Wilma Mankeller, uh, on the obverse, there are lines in the around the earlobe, and those are pretty prominent, as you've seen in the photos that I just showed you. Now, if I take this photo and I make it transparent and bring in the, the reversed image of the Wilma Mankeller, you can see right in this area here where her hair is a high point right and so basically on the die that would be a, i mean i'm sorry that would be a high point on the die and so when the two dies clash or bang against each other those high points will put lines in in the opposing die or the reverse die and uh, or the uh, obverse and here is part of the star and part of the hair here so if i take and switch it back to the other side you can see where that star might show up under the nose of the of George Washington and her hairlines will show up right underneath the earlobe. And there should be some lines through here. Let's see what that is. Ah, her shoulder. So this line is going to be a high, uh, the highest spot on the die, right? All the images are carved out. So that edge can also uh, put lines into the, uh, the reverse die or the obverse. So we go back to that. <clears throat> so that means that we should be able to see uh, possibly some lines in around in God we trust. Now, in regards to the clashes on the reverse on Wilma Mankeller's side, if I take in translucent this, uh, some of the images around, for instance, uh, the profile of George Washington's mouth may show up around the star, throughout the star here, and along her shoulder and right here between the I and L and Keller. Now, mind you, I'm showing you the reverse image because that's what you're going to get on the die is a reverse image on the opposite side when they do clash. So this is part of the nose in George, or the eye. That's George Washington's eyelid right there. And that will come out between the I and the L. And then <clears throat> possibly a line here and a line here. Um, so there's the shoulder on the George Washington side or on the obverse and her hairline and part of the star. So now when I take and Bring, the, bring this back. Now you can see the purple lines that I drew here are to outline the, the highest spots on the obverse die, which would be right here in the crooks of his eyelid, at the base of his nose, on his chin, his neck, and right here where his um, hairline is. So that means on the on Wilma you're going to see, you should see lines here, here, 
in here. Now I'm going to take and flip this over and we'll take a look at it the opposite way. Okay, I'm back. And now what I've done is I've taken and created a positive image of the reverse of Wilma Mankiller. And then I took the image of George and created a negative image. So that's kind of what you're getting is this negative image. Imagine all these high spots as, as being carved out and this all the flat areas are the high spots. And when you take and make it transparent, so the high spots are basically along the edge right here, 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 here. And then on the opposite die, all of these high spots are, are carved out. That means that the two flat surfaces are the high spots and all the details are low spots. So uh, you would bang against each other and maybe leave uh, telltale signs of the line work. So for instance, when we focus on George Washington's eyelid, that may be the highest spot on the die. And what it did is it put a ding in the flat spot on the Wilma Mankiller side or the reverse, leaving this little bit of impression of his eyelid. Same thing here, where George Washington's uh, sideburns are and then his earlobe. You'll see a line in here in this area. Let's see if I can get that little, right? This area here. So there's his earlobe and his sideburn, right? And if I take and bring uh, Wilma back in, right? There's this, there's the earlobe coming in to this flat area of uh, the woman man killer uh, reverse side. And so this is the highest spot on the die. When it comes down, it bangs against the flat surface and it may leave a little bit of a line or impression here, possibly the shoulder area here. And so that's what we're witnessing when we see this kind of, uh, this is a die clash. That's the dies clashing, banging against each other. And that happens when there is no uh, planchet in the chamber and the, the press comes down and they bang against each other because there's nothing to prevent it from banging into each other because there's no planchet or no metal between them. And so a blank planchet would then be formed to create a coin. And without the planchet, your dies are just going to bang against each other, transferring parts of the image into the obverse or the opposite die. Hopefully, this has shed some light on um, what's going on here with the obverse die clash and reverse die clash. So in this case, the coins that I did show you in the photos prior to this is actually the die clash on the obverse and the reverse. You know, a little bit of both. All right, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Okay, to recap that real quick, this line here below the earlobe is the hairline from Wilma Mankiller's on the reverse. And up in her on her shoulder is Washington's uh, earlobe, and between the I and the L is his eyelid. <laughs> Guys, I really feel good about this video. If you liked it, give me those clicks. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, share it with your friends. Thanks for coming. Man, I'm telling you, I put a lot of work into this. I hope you stuck around to the end. Um, yeah, I had a good month. I searched a lot of coin, and I certainly hope that uh, you guys appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Coin Mojo out.